Let's talk about COVID-19. The president clings to the false notion the coronavirus will just disappear. Says some people just have the sniffles, downplaying the severity of the disease. Calls Dr. Anthony Fauci a bit of an alarmist. Says the problem is testing. Epidemiologist Dr. Jonathan Cantor from the Penn Center for Epidemiology joins me once again here on The Morning Show. Look, we see the numbers every day. They're mounting. We see the death toll rise. Here in Florida and around the world, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Yet I have friends, smart, educated friends, who say things are exaggerated. It's the media's fault. You have to hit him over the head with a sledgehammer? Well, I think it is a challenging situation, right? I mean, we've got... Uh you know, people who are either on the one end kind of embracing the idea that we're in a pandemic, that we need to do what we can, we need to wear masks, we need to try to do social distancing. And you've got some others that sort of, I think, have this, uh, you know, this errant notion that uh, doing those things, that wearing a mask is somehow a concession, that wearing a mask is somehow a political statement. Uh, I do like the direction uh, that the White House is moving in now um, with saying, uh, you know, with the president talking about the patriotism, something I've been talking about for a while, actually, the idea that wearing face masks is patriotic, that doing what we can and things like that to help our fellow Americans is a patriotic act. So hopefully that's going to be a trend that really kind of kicks along uh, and that really helps to kind of squash this idea that doing things that are sort of, uh, you know, largely common sense and that have been shown, uh, you know, at least in one study, uh, a meta-analysis of 164 other studies in The Lancet to reduce your risk of transmission by either three to six fold. So that's like, a, you know, you have 15 percent of the chance of getting the uh, of getting the disease if you're wearing a face mask. So that's a pretty big uh, magnitude of effect. If we had a drug that worked that well, we'd all be dancing in the streets. Well, let's pick up on the face mask. Dr. Robert Redfield, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said if we all wore face coverings for the next four, six, eight, 12 weeks across the nation, this virus transmission would stop. Possible? Well, I think the idea of it stopping in its tracks, I think, is very unlikely, especially at this point with community spread. I think having a dramatic reduction in the trend that we're seeing right now absolutely is possible. Uh, you know, I think what Dr. Redfield is highlighting is something important. And I think it's a key point that people sometimes forget. If we want the economy to hum along, if we want to go back to business as usual, to America as usual, then we have to do the smart things. And those smart things are at least two things. Number one, if you're going to be outside and you can't social distance, wear a face mask. You know, and number two, just be smart about those interactions. Try to reduce those kind of social distancing potential interactions. And number three, by the way, is testing. Uh, you know, testing is not the enemy. Knowing that you have the disease is helpful because what it does is it allows you to act in a way that's smart and that reduces transmission. So I think if we were to increase the use of face masks, increase the use of testing, that is what would allow the economy to really hum along nicely. And that, I think, is what we all want. But you know what? If it takes eight to 10 days to get your test results back, that's kind of counterproductive. Absolutely. You know, part of the problem right now is that we're seeing this huge lag in testing. Uh, I was actually on the phone yesterday, ironically, uh, with the Florida Department of Health talking about this uh, and, and discussing kind of options and ways to help reduce that lag, because it's absolutely unacceptable to have these waits where it's 10 days. Some commercial labs are 13, 16 days. Well, at that point, you know, it's not really helpful at all. So absolutely, it's a critical issue. And increasing that lab, cap lab capability is a key thing. It's a key, you know, a, a key challenge. Uh, and it's something that I've been uh, talking to the state about. Let me talk about the preliminary results of a clinical trial. They suggest that a, a new treatment for COVID-19 dramatically reduces the number of patients needing intensive care. Now, that's according to the UK company that developed it, uh, the, the test. It uses a protein called interferon beta, which the body produces when it gets a viral infection. Has to be confirmed yet, but from what you read, does it show promise? Well, it definitely shows promise. You know, the question is going to be if these, uh, you know, what they've seen can be replicated in larger trials. This was a very, very small preliminary study in about 100 people in the UK in, in like nine different centers. Uh, and they did find, you know, some impressive reductions, uh, you know, in their, outpoint, in, their, in their outcomes of interest. Uh, the problem is we don't know, you know, how those, uh, you know, how those things are going to translate when we've got larger populations. A number of their results were kind of on the border, on the margin of statistical significance. And that's not something surprising, uh, given the relatively small number of patients in the trial. Interferon beta has been around for years. Uh, it's available as an injectable form. What they're doing is basically just aerosolizing it so you inhale it. This was actually an approach that was tried for asthma years ago and actually abandoned. 
Uh, but if it works, it'll be wonderful. But we really need to see more studies to really know if this is going to be a viable option. But again, it's never going to take the place of primary prevention of vaccines, of the idea of not getting it in the first place. Dr. Jonathan Cantor, always appreciate your input. Have a good day.